Hey everybody, I'm here in the Eigenworks office with James and uh, we were just talking about sample size when you're conducting qualitative research. The question really is, how many people do I need to talk to to get definitive answers about something? And the problem with this is that I think product managers, product marketers, and actually any executive faces this all the time. You know, you have a feeling that something is true and you're using stories to convince other people. That's a good thing, it's a natural thing, it's a human thing. But we get accused often, I think executives get accused often, and maybe valid, um, that you're trying to prove a point using anecdotes rather than uh, using data. And of course, especially in the world of SaaS, um, we are, have massive amounts of data. And so what everyone wants to know is, is do you have enough stories to actually represent um, re represent the issue accurately, or are you just telling me your favorite story? And so we've done given a lot of thought to this, and we've uh, tried out many different approaches, um, and we rely quite heavily on some uh, academic research, which we're going to publish in our blog in the next little while. The, but the real question is, how many conversations do I need to have in order to have some sense that my answer to that question or my any action that I'm going to take is uh, is warranted and so the way to think about this and it's particularly a problem at scale okay it's one thing in a b2b world where maybe you're uh, you know closing a few dozen transactions a quarter 50 or so transactions a quarter let's say um, but it's particularly an issue when you're talking about thousands of trans smaller transactions or hundreds of thousands of, of smaller transactions um, in a unit of time. The question is, how many people do I need to talk to before I have some sense of definitive answer? So the first thing to think about uh, is this uh, concept of, I'm just gonna find out where my board is here, uh, saturation. So saturation is a term in the uh, literature about qualitative research that says that I've, when, when I reach saturation, I'm not discovering new themes. So it means if I talk to N plus one people, um, I will, that those, that interview, that conversation will repeat themes that I've discovered in the first N conversations. And when you reach, con when you reach saturation, there's no point in talking anymore. I mean, that's not true from a humanistic standpoint, but from a point of uh, qualitative research, it's very true. And the other fact of the matter is that we, you know, we have very, we, we, we have compressed time. We want to do things within a budget. We want to uh, not overdo it, um, but we want to make sure we have enough. So the real question is, when am I reaching saturation? So there are a lot of different, uh, uh, there's a lot of different articles written about this and approaches. I'm going to give you the bottom line. So the, the bottom line is that 20 to 30 conversations will allow you to reach uh, saturation, will give you uh, all of the themes that are represented by the larger population. So it's a little bit like, and uh, I'm just going to sort of draw a circle here. And it's a little bit like um, every conversation that I have in a research project will fill in a little bit of this circle, right? And we'll get a little patch over here. And then maybe another conversation will do this. We'll fill that in with information. Then we might have actually a conversation that sort of intersects all of this. So there's a little bit of overlap, but there's some, there's some new stuff in the conversation that's happening there. And so we want to keep talking until the next conversation basically just overlaps all of the stuff that we've already covered. Now, there are a couple of key things to do to make this work really well. The first one is to have a clear question. Um, so a clear question could be something like, uh, why are we losing? Or um, uh, what is different about enterprise buyers as compared to 
SMB buyers. We know a lot of, like, we talk to a lot of companies who are trying to move up market into enterprise. Some companies who are trying to move from very large enterprises to smaller ones. Regardless, if you're moving to a new market segment, there's a very valid question about what about our personas, our product, the use cases that we enable are different in this new population. And so what we're doing is really drawing a new circle and then saying what is different then. And so that's a fairly clear question to ask. The second thing to do is to have a clear uh, segment of your population. So uh, we'll have to often have clients that say, well, we, have, we serve SMB, we serve uh, midsize, and we serve enterprise, and we have wins, losses, and we have churns and renewals, and we'd like to do a project to, st to understand how we can win more and retain more customers across all of our segments. And then we'll find out later they also have two product lines. I'm sort of painting like the ultimate extreme. The fact is that each one of those segments warrants its own study. Now that's not for me or Eigenworks to sell more research. In fact, we, we work with clients a lot to try to layer these projects so that you can um, you know, maybe do one big one and then do a differential study of, 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 other, of other segments. But the point is that it's often good to try to focus in on a clear segment. Now, how do you choose the clear segment? And how do you choose the clear question? Um, the answer is, my, my approach to that, my suggestion to you is we look for the areas of greatest risk and greatest opportunity. So if we were to answer questions about our enterprise segment, um, we might be able to sell, you know, several deals of $100,000 annual recurring revenue or 500000 whatever your sort of deal size is. That's potentially, maybe that's a big opportunity for you. Um, but if you compare that to the risk of losing your key market segment, like maybe your transactional business and SME, and you're really worried about that, that's, a, that's another segment to sort of think about. So the, the ways to pick your clear question and your clear segment are to look for greatest risk and greatest opportunity. and then segment and target on that basis, okay? Um, once you have that risk, or once you have the question and the segment outlined, then you can slice your population and find, you know, 20 or 30 of those, talk to them, conduct your interviews, do your analysis, and you're going to get most of the themes that you need. You're going to saturate the topic area. Um, so that's really what it boils down to. Um, that's in order to address uh, a very large, um, you know, particular kind of question. So the other thing, uh, and I think I'll leave it at this, and maybe we'll come back and have some more conversations about this, is that we want to study success and failure. Um, so when you pick your 20 or 30, I really highly, strongly, positively, unequivocally recommend that you balance studying wins and losses, renewals and churned accounts, um, uh, and high NPS and low NPS. It's so tempting to look at failure. It's so tempting for people to come and say, well, we want to know why we lose. And we've had lots of clients come to us, we can tell you why you lose. But it's a different thing altogether to tell you how you could win more. And maybe we'll talk about that at another time. So those are your guidelines for solving a big problem. Uh, there are a couple other um, ways of looking at this. Um, what we're talking about here is sort of what we what we refer to as an epic study. And when you do an epic study, you need this 20 to 30 conversations. There are other types of um, approaches, which one that we call is just a probe. So that might not give you full saturation, but it might start to give you an idea. 
Um, there's another type of investigation, and we'll talk about these later, um, called cadence, where you look at a certain number, let's say five, every so long period of time, let's say every month, every quarter, and just get a sense of what the trends are over time. With cadence, you just really want to make sure that you're doing enough uh, on that basis in order to make sure you're not just picking random uh, pieces of the problem space. Okay, so this question here is really about uh, solving a big uh, problem in your business or achieving a, a big opportunity, 20 to 30 conversations.